Introduction Friends, by now we know that all living organisms are made of cells. In unicellular organisms, a single cell performs all basic functions. But in multicellular organisms, there are millions of cells. Most of these cells are specialized to carry out a few functions. In human beings, muscle cells contract and relax to cause movement. Nerve cells carry messages. Blood flows to transport oxygen, food, hormones and waste material and so on and so forth. In plants, vascular tissues conduct food and water from one part of the plant to the other part. So multicellular organisms show division of labor. A group of cells that are similar in structure and work together to achieve a particular function forms a tissue. Blood, phloem and muscle are all examples of tissues. What are tissues? A tissue is a group of cells that have similar structure and function. Like animals, plants too possess various types of tissues that perform different functions. Are plants and animals made of same type of tissues? Friends, do plants and animals have the same structure? There are noticeable differences between the plants and animals. Plants are stationary, that is, they don't move. This is because most of the tissues they have are dead and dead cells can provide mechanical strength. Animals, on the other hand, move around in search of food and shelter. They consume more energy as compared to plants. Most of the tissues they contain are living. Another difference between animals and plants is that the growth in plants is limited to certain regions, while this is not so in animals. There are some tissues in plants that divide throughout their life. Plant Tissues Classification of Plant Tissues In plants, there are basically two types of tissues. Permanent Tissue and Meristematic Tissue this differentiation is based on the ability of the mature cells of the tissue to divide and produce new cells. Let's have a look here at classification of plant tissues. Plant tissue is classified into permanent tissue and meristematic tissues. Permanent tissue is made up of mature cells incapable of cell division and meristematic tissue is made up of cells capable of cell division. Permanent tissues are simple and complex. Simple tissue is composed of single type of cell and it is of three types parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Parenchyma and colenchyma together are called chlorenchyma. Sclerenchyma is of two types, fibers and sclerides. Complex tissue is of two types, phloem and xylem. Phloem consists of sieve tube and companion cell and xylem consists of xylem cells and tracheids. Meristematic tissue is classified into three types apical, 
lateral, and intercalary. Apical tissues are present at the tips of root and stem. Lateral tissues are present below the bark and in cambium cells of dicot roots and stems. Intercalary tissues are present in the internodes of stem. Meristematic tissues Actively dividing young cells Meristems are found at the growing points in plants such as tips of roots, shoots and branches. The growth and thickness of stem and root is also due to the activity of meristematic tissues. Meristematic tissues or meristems are formed of actively dividing young cells. They keep adding new cells throughout the life of a plant. They are responsible for plant growth. Meristematic cells are thin-walled and small. They are compact, that is, there are no intercellular spaces between the cells. The nuclei are large and centrally located. Vacuoles are either absent or very small. The cells have the ability to divide actively. Types of meristems Apical meristems Occurrence According to their position in the plant, meristems are apical, lateral and intercalary. Function These are situated at the growing tip of stems and roots. These cells always maintain their nature and position and are hence called apical initials. They bring about the elongation of the root and stem. Intercalary meristems These meristems become separated from the apex due to the development of permanent tissues in between. It differs from other meristems in that it gets fully utilized in the formation of permanent tissues. Occurrence These are located at the base of the nodes, example mint, based at internodes, example grasses, or base of leaf, example in pine. Function. These produce an increase in length of the organ. Lateral meristems. Occurrence. These are found beneath the bark of trees as cork cambium and in the vascular bundles of dicot roots and stem known as cambium. Function. Lateral meristems causes the organ to increase in diameter and girth. Permanent tissues Occurrence Permanent tissues form bulk of the plant body. They are present at all parts except the meristems. Functions Permanent tissues are formed of cells specialized to carry out different functions. These cells have different shapes related to the function they perform. They are derived from the division of meristematic cells. The differentiated cells do not divide. They may be alive or dead. They have thick cell wall and large vacuole. Nucleus is displaced to one side. Protective permanent tissue. Tissue with thick walled cells. 
permanent tissues are made up of cells which have lost their ability to multiply. They take a permanent shape to perform some permanent function. They may be living or dead. According to the function performed, the permanent tissues are of three types. Protective, supporting and conducting. Supporting tissue. Parenchyma. Parenchyma is composed of large, thin-walled cells, usually with a single large vacuole. They are found in soft parts of the plant, such as in the cortex, which is the outer region, and the pith, the central region of roots and stems. Have a look at the figure. These cells are living. They store food and also provide temporary support to the plant. Potatoes are mainly composed of parenchyma cells, as seen in the figure. Some parenchymatous cells, particularly in the leaf, contain chloroplasts. They then form a tissue called chlorenchyma. Now, chlorus means green. Chlorenchyma helps the leaf to produce food. Cholenchyma. Colon means glue. Cholenchyma is made up of parenchymatous cells which are elongated and are thick at the corners, as seen in the figure. It is found in the leaf stalks and below the epidermis of stems. The tissue helps to support the parts of a plant. Sclerenchyma Scleros means heart. Sclerenchyma is composed of long, narrow and thick cells which have become dead. These cells develop very thick walls due to the deposition of lignin. This tissue provides strength to plant parts. It is found in stems and veins of the leaves. The three categories, namely parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma, are grouped as simple tissues each being made up of one type of a cell. What are conducting tissues? Conducting tissues, also called the vascular tissue, provides a passage for water and dissolves materials to move up and down in the plant. The xylem and phloem are two types of conducting tissues. Xylem. Xylem cells are thick walled. These cells are somewhat in the form of tubular passages, as seen in the figure. They provide for upward movement of water and dissolved materials absorbed from the soil by the roots to other parts of the plant. Xylo means wood. Older xylem tissue forms the wood and does not participate in transport. You can determine the age of a tree by counting its annual rings, which actually are the xylem rings. The xylem tissue consists of tracheids and vessels, also called tracheary elements, and xylem parenchyma, respectively. Types of xylem cells Tracheids are elongated dead cells with large cavities without any contents. They have highly lignified cell walls. They provide mechanical support by developing various types of thickenings in their walls. 
Xylem vessels or trachea are long tube like structures meant for transporting water and dissolved minerals. Their cell walls are quite hard, thick, and lignified. Horizontal walls get dissolved and make a continuous water pipe. Xylem parenchyma consists of living parenchyma cells associated with the xylem. These cells serve for the storage of food, that is, sugars and starch, and also help in the conduction of water and minerals. Phloem Flus means bark. Phloem cells provide a passage for the downward movement of food manufactured in the leaves to various parts of the plant. They also provide for the upward movement of the prepared food towards the growing new leaves. The phloem consists of sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma cells, and phloem fibers. The xylem and phloem collectively form vascular bundles. The veins of leaves are examples of vascular bundles. They are in line with the conducting tissues of stem and root.